Netherlands. We had promised you earlier, Edith Kimani is in the Netherlands. She is at The Hague and she joins us now live from there. Uh, Edith, if you can hear me, um, what is the schedule? What do we expect in the next 48 hours? Well, thank you, Wilson. I wish I could give you that answer with clarity. Unfortunately, we don't have an itinerary. What we do know for a fact is that come what may, at 10 a.m. tomorrow in the Netherlands, the International Criminal Court, Mr. Kenyatta, as we're now referring to him, will be on those steps and he will be entering the status conference. I can't tell you what Judge Kuniko Ozaki said today, who is a presiding judge. She said she will be asking specific questions to specific attorneys, which is a sort of indication that she's looking for something specific to sort of clarify the issue of cooperation between Kenya and specifically the office of the prosecutor at the moment. Wilson. Well, it, it is one of the uh, concerns that um, probably we should bring up is the fact that when he traveled, when he was uh, traveling to The Hague, he was expected to travel as the president, but now he has traveled as a private citizen. So what has the reception been like? Was he treated as a dignitary or, or was he treated like uh, just like a normal kind of citizen? Well, we were treated to quite a bit of fanfare this afternoon because of that, but not the kind that you would expect. It was more behind-the-scenes drama. At one point, there were senators, MPs, and other government officials settled at the airport. As were we, we were waiting for the president to arrive, and we weren't sure what terminal he would be using. There were reports that he would be using the VIP area, and then there were other reports later saying that he would be using a normal terminal, as any civilian would. And before we could figure it out, officials from the embassy asked us to vacate the premises, the airport actually, saying that President Uhuru Kenyatta had asked for no celebrations at all at the airport. And so the government officials proceeded to the hotel where he is at the moment. But later, he emerged from the VIP area. But this is what is interesting. There was evidently security, and there was certainly a lot of vehicles. But there was not the usual celebration and fanfare that we associate with the presidency. It was simply his very close family. I supported Margaret Kenyatta to them, his communication team led man by Manoya Sipisu, and the vehicles, it's important to note, as many as they were, were in blue plates. And in the Netherlands, blue plates are an indication of hired vehicles or taxis. And it was only his personal vehicle that he was using, which had a yellow plate, which we suspect was from the embassy. So in as much as he is still the elected president of Kenya. There was hardly anything that indicated that he was the president while he was in the Netherlands. In fact, at some point, a few people asked me at the airport, who is this? Why are you following him around? That's how low-key he was. Wilson. So no fanfare, nothing. He was a private citizen in the, in the Hague. And as you mentioned, there were a couple of dignitaries who traveled with him to be particular. Um, about 120 members of parliament traveled with him to The Hague. Um, are, are they going to be allowed in court or are they going to be watching the proceedings in their hotel rooms? It is likely that they might end up watching their, uh, the proceedings in the hotel room because the private gallery at The Hague can only hold so many people. And as it is, there are seats which have been reserved for members of the press. There are others which have been reserved for human rights activists and what have you. So it's unlikely that each and every one of them is going to be able to witness this live or as live as they possibly can. Um, but we do expect to see them at least at the steps of The Hague. We didn't see any of that today. We were actually wondering if they were still around and the only indication that there were any Kenyan officials was at, the, was at the airport early this morning when a few of them came into the country but other than that it's been rather quiet tomorrow as you mentioned however we do expect to see quite a couple of them before the proceedings and after Edith, the very last question um, there was a status conference today would you kindly update us on what exactly happened today at the ICC Wilson, anyone who was following the status conference today would have a feeling of deja vu. It was very much similar to what had happened earlier in the first status conference where Attorney General Gibbon Wigai appeared. It was very simply 
a back and forth between Attorney General Gibi Mugai and the Office of the Prosecution uh, led by Benjamin Gumbert today. Now, Benjamin Gumbert was asked at one point, which I thought was interesting, uh, because he keeps insisting that the Kenyan government is not providing materials. He did cite phone records. He also talked about tax uh, tax returns, and he also talked about bank statements. And the judges asked him, will this evidence um, make your case solid? And he answered, I don't know. And I found this to be very surprising because all along, um, the Office of the Prosecution has been saying this is the last puzzle that we need to seal this case. And here they were today saying, we don't know. We're simply going by nine witness accounts who said that they were paid, who said that they were called, who said that they were given land and they were given this and that, which is an indication that if we open these files, we might find more. So that's as far as the Office of the Prosecution went today. Attorney General Gibi Mugai, however, says that the Office of the Prosecution cannot keep making the Kenyan government do the investigations for them. This has been his argument all along. He repeated it again today as it is. It remains at a deadlock. Those were the exact words of the Office of the Prosecution. And we wait to hear what the judges will say with regard to this. Well, thank you very much, Edith, for that. We'll, of course, keep in touch with you so that you can keep us up to date on the goings on at the ICC. That's Edith.